Well, hello everybody. This is part two. The next thing I do after I get through and examine each individual frame using the B link command is I will go in and stack them. And I stack them by using this script called, I go into batch preprocessing. And that's in our batch processing and then batch P processing. And this screen appears. What I do next is I go to lights, click on lights over there, and then I go to you add custom. Now you could go down here and add lights, add flats, add darks, and do it that way, but I've been doing it this way with very good luck. And it was recommended by Chuck Ayuab over at doing it this way for some reason. I don't know what exactly why he said it. He, I guess he tried it the other way and had a bad luck at one time. So he does it this way and I've been doing it this way and I haven't had any problems. Anyways, I'm going to go and add the luminosity. So I come over here to the Leo Quartet, data, and I have my luminosity in here. Highlight all the luminosity. I press add files. I come over to image type, light, because they were light frames, and I'm going to name it L. L. And I press OK, and then here they appear over here. Now I'm going to add the red. Again, I go where my red files were. This image type, they were light. Filter, let's put R. Do the same thing, add custom. We're going to go with G for green. Here's all my green ones. And again, all these subframes were already examined closely, so they're all good. Okay? So you got to make sure you, you have, you're using really good frames. And the last one is blue. So I come over here to where the blue uh, exposures are. Click light and blue. And press OK. And there they are. All the light frames are all located where they're supposed to be. Now we're going to add the, black, the flat flames. And add custom. We'll come over here to data. Nope, not data. I actually have all my flat frames lay, uh, in a pl special place called support frames because I've already created all these flats and I use flats. I use 139 for gain. And uh, for that night, it was the March 4th data. So I'm going to go with luminosity again. And I made 15 flat frames. Over here, press flat. Now, now it's really important to name it exactly as I did before. So the luminosity was L, and so I'm making this one luminosity. So they, they've got to correspond. So they've got to have the same exact names as they did for the light frames. Now we're going to add custom. And it's already in the correct area now. So light. And then we're going to press R for red. Here's the red flat frames. Press flat. OK. Go to the G for green. Press flat. Oop. Flat in this one. And then last but not least, we're going to go to blue. Okay, then you press flat, blue, okay, and now I'm going to press, okay, so there's the flats, now we're going to go and save the darks, darks are real easy because there's only 
one set that I really have to worry about here. So I add, and again, I go to my oh, ZWO, and we're going to go darks, and dark 139, and negative 20 degrees, and these were all 90 second images, so I'm going to highlight the 90 second image darks that I already have. Press darks. And now it's not so important. Uh, the program Fix Insight already knows what the the correct dark frames to correspond to each image, so you don't have to be so specific now. Last but not least is the bias. Over here, add custom. Go to here's bias. And the bias doesn't even have to be the correct temperature. You don't really have to worry about the temperature for the bias frames. So let's come over here to bias. And I usually just call them bias. Okay. At that point, we're all set. The next thing you have to do is you have to line up this. And but before I get to that, let me just um, go over some of these things in here inside the center. In the light frames, uh, you have all these image registration, and I actually leave, I don't really mess with these things. You can drizzle the data, you can, you know, change some of these parameters, but I, I have been leaving everything in its default. Uh, winter, when, when are I sigma clipping? Um, I just haven't had to mess with this stuff yet. So, and I've been getting really good results. One other thing I should mention over here is this global options. When you first open it up, it's going to have these ones selected, uh, optimize dark frames. I take that off and it says generate rejection maps. I unclick that too, because it'll, what it, after it stacks, it'll post some other folders you don't really need to look at. You can if you want. I mean, if you want to take a look at the rejected data, go by all means, but I don't really have any need for it. And CFA, that stands for Color Filter Array. If you have a color camera, you're going to want to depress this. Uh, if you don't, if you have a monochrome camera like myself, you just keep it unselected. And use master bias, master dark, master flat. If you have a master bias that you always use, you can have it that is Pix Insight. Look for that as well. All right, the other thing, I, I'm in uh, light frames. What I want to do now is pick a reference frame. And usually what you would do is you would look at one of your exposures that you really like that looks really good. And that's going to be a reference frame. And I renamed it. And that's this fourth one down. And I called, I, I kept the same name, but I put REF in there to stand for reference frame. I mentioned AstroDude. AstroDude does a really interesting thing. He actually goes into much more depth on how to select the optimal reference frame. And he does, he shows you how to do all this uh, stuff, if you will, um, that, what you, that you'll get the uh, the optimal reference frame. I just eyeball it. I've been having good luck with that. But if you want it more in depth, I, as I said, I would recommend going to ask you. Anyways, I would double click this. And it pops in down here. Next, your output directory. I put all my stuff into this uh, directory called, uh, let me show you my directories. I made this process directory. Uh, if if it wasn't there, you can actually just make a new one. Like, I'll just make a new one for old time's sake and call it process one or something like that. And I would select that. Okay, and then select folder, and everything is done. Okay. Sorry. Just go back. All right, so now I'm all set. I've got everything all set. And what you would do new, next is press Diagnostics. And it says everything checks out OK. So you press OK. If it didn't, if something was wrong, it would say uh, no go. And then I would press Run. And this screen always pops up. And so you would just press Continue. 
And there it goes. You get an hour depending on how much stuff you have. Okay, well, let's go see what uh, what I got. Collect it here. So we come over here to File, Open, and here's the folder where everything is. It's in. It's well, here. Let me call it here. Here's Process. All right, here's all the calibration frames. We don't need any of that. The logs, we don't need that. Here's what's registered. We don't really need any of that. We come over here to master. And these are all the uh, frames. It's got the bias, the dark, the flat, and it's got the four light frames. What I like to do is I like to make a new folder and I put, I just call it DBF, which stands for dark, flats, and bias, I put them all in one folder. Then I just got my four uh, frames here. I'm going to open all of them up. And there they are, it's all set. Let me show you what they look like. And uh, they're all really dark right now. You can't see, really see much. And what you have to do, and this is what I'm going to show you on next step, the next processing. But let me just Give a quick overview of what they look like right now. I already went over my normal five minutes, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so you come over here to all process. I'm gonna move over to screen transfer function, and I'm just gonna do a quick. All right, here's what the that looks pretty good. Look at that. This is the red. Here's the luminosity. Oh, that's pretty good too. The detail on that. Okay. And here's the green. Again, I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. And last but not least, our blue. Okay. Well, anyways, that's all for this video. So we successfully looked at the individual frames in B-Link so far, and then we stacked it. And this was the results of stacking. Okay, I'll continue with uh, showing you more, uh, more of my process flow. Again, so far this is what I do on every video or every video that I or every image that I uh, process, and um, I'll continue with. The stuff I do with on a re image. Anyways, thank you. We'll see you later.